let's discuss the czars of Russia, the boyars of the related Slavic lands of the Northeast and Far East and Central Asian Plateau, and of course, their concept as Romanovs, the Bats Knights of Currency Absolved Debt. Before beginning, I would like to explain that I'm only supporting their argument and method, not a compare and a contrast, which means you have to pick the side with fewer words and stated compound uh, word and combination. Therefore, you fail if you don't mention either or one. You have to mention both to win. I won't do that, just there's no bias, therefore I support them. Let's begin. Everything the Romanovs do is to support their travel and transit between countries. There is no higher or lower purpose other than their own sustenance. Not subsistence, but sustenance. They have to keep themselves resumed as a bloodline and their particular genetic adaptation to the systems of Kremlin and state and municipal capitals established prior by uh, the Grozny line of Siberians who now see as Native Americans and uh, Siberian natives and uh, lesser Slavs, which means they aren't properly uh, Caucasoid. Their system works thus. They're Baltic, by the way. You have the Baltic states, the Ukraine, Poland, Georgia, the Caucasus, and near the Black Sea, the Caspians, and of course it cuts off at the Carpathians and the passage down into uh, Wallachia. But Molo Moldova and Transylvania, those are German lowliers from I Italians and Germans and Grecians that have come north, and of course Greek and Anatolian provinces. The whole goal is to support the control of farmland. The entire region starves, not temporarily, but permanently, unless an accounts justifier is placed into debt at whichever leader, traditionally Russia, is willing to invade another country based on an infantry, armor, or air, now air flight and petrol investment in uh, the military. And if the leader held hostage of Russia doesn't invade a country, another country will cross invade. At which point, the Russian farm stocks are cut off, and more food from Germany, Italy, and the Balkans will flow into the aggrieved nations of the war to support them on a foreign aid called a farm aid. The origin of the term different, of course, in America. So you could see that the leaders of these countries, particularly the Russian leadership, has very little power. It's always the Russian army. And the lesser power is often framed as separatists or uprising or cultural movements or even revolutions if it goes out far enough to be in Czech, Czech Republic and Slovakia. Even these other movements are uh, beholden to the currency absolved debt. You produce a bunch of weapons, you stockpile, then you spend. The cost to human life is considered negligible. Negligible. The false canard is currency absolved literature. A canard is a false logical argument. They'll often bring these up, but these are poor shot in tools. These are the tools of the politicians. And since the politicians are forced to invoke them, the Romanovs always win. Because the Romanovs will always duel back, otherwise not using them. So we can see the system of the Bats Knights is of such grandeur controlling farm into Russia. Otherwise, Russia has to invade. There's a temporary stopgap in prices of food, fuels, and of course vices, and uh, commodity intellects like the internet, the intellectual property of the internet, the concept, that the Romanovs hold the world hostage. 
if you were curious, it's the source of the word prick. As in, somebody with a pretty sharp penis. <laughs>